Hello everyone, welcome back to Zepcentric. So today we are going to discuss rear camber arms. These same principles I'm gonna discuss about these camber arms and kind of the things that I like about them, some of the features of them, will also apply to the toe arms that these manufacturers produce, but for demonstration purposes, we are only showing you the camber arms. Um, one of them, I only had uh, a toe arm available. The camber arm was already installed. We, we went through our, our leftovers and we happened to find this, this camber arm or toe arm. So I'm gonna start off with the lesser expensive options. So on this side, we have a Megan racing arm. We have a white line arm. As you can see, they look very, very similar, but the actual ends are slightly different. So. One of them is uh, polyurethane and the other one is a spherical. On the more expensive side, you have these arms. So these arms are forged, billet. Um, one of them has a chromoly end. Uh, one of them has a really high quality bearing in them uh, from, from Europe. So it's, a, I believe, a bearing that comes out of a Mercedes or a Porsche OEM vehicle. So, we're going to show you guys kind of what tools are involved uh, to adjust these things and then we'll discuss kind of what I, what I like about them or things that you may need to know or your alignment shop may need to know in order to adjust them. So starting off on this end, we've got the Megan Racing arm. So initially Megan Racing had a polyurethane bushing in here and they ended up revising this just recently to a bearing. So I think that there was just a lot of deflection in that bushing and at some point they decided to just upgrade this to a bearing. This arm I believe is like 170 bucks or something like that. It's under $200. Now this arm here looks very similar but a different color by white line does have a polyurethane bushing much different than the one that was in the Megan arm. The Megan arm just kind of sandwiched in here. It wasn't actually pressed in and I think that was a big part of why it had so much deflection. Wattline actually presses this bushing in. It's been working really well for us. So what I'm gonna tell you now is kind of what tools are required. And one of the things that you'll notice is a difference between this and these more expensive arms. So you'll need a 22 and a 23 millimeter wrench. Now there are other brands that use these same kind of, you know, materials. So True Heart, um, a lot, a lot of the lesser expensive brands, they're, they're all basically using these same pieces and then they're changing out the ends on them to, uh, to their own whatever proprietary stuff that they do. Okay, so 22 and a 23. So your 22 goes on the nut side here, all right? And your 23 is gonna go on the turnbuckle for the adjustment purposes, okay? So that's how you do that. Now, the thing about this type of an arm is that it has a jam nut. So the problem with the jam nut or what your alignment guy is going to have to deal with is whenever he locks this down, okay, when he locks this, it may rotate this. So it might take an extra hand to actually make sure that this jam nut gets locked in without repositioning the end. So, and same goes on this side. On this side, it's actually a bearing on the knuckle. This is the important side. So what I would suggest is that you lock this side down first. So this stays, the bearing stays centered. And then you can go in and hold this and then lock this one down. So that's what you gotta deal with with this. You'll also notice that when adjusting this and tightening these jam nuts down, these threads are, are pretty coarse in the sense that when you tighten them up, the camber will change on you. So you need to kind of compensate for that. So you'll go in, you'll adjust it, and you might see a movement of, you know, a tenth of a degree or two tenths of a degree once you tighten the nuts down and you'll fall out of your desired spec. So you'll just compensate for that before you tighten them up. So these are also made out of steel. Um, over time, I'm sure that once this finish degrades, they will start rusting. You may even see some rusting inside here. So there is some, um, I believe there's some copper uh, anti-seize that they, they install into them when they're new. You can kind of see it here. There's some, there's some copper in there. So you just want to make sure you maintain these and keep them clean. 
I mean, you really do, you get what you pay for. They'll do the job initially. I just don't know how long they're gonna last you in comparison to these more expensive options. All right, everyone, so pardon the interruption, but this just came across as we were gonna go live with this video and we had a client come back in who uh, got Megan Racing Arms installed on his Model Y uh, maybe about five or six months ago, but he's only got a few thousand miles on the car. He doesn't drive very much. So he came in because we needed to swap out the end of his Megan Racing arm to the updated revised version. So this is the first time we've actually gone ahead and attempted to install the updated version, uh, thinking that this was going to resolve all of the problems. In the past, what we had people do was just come back and do the upgrade to a Mountain Pass Performance arm. I, I gotta tell you that without a doubt, that is the arm that, that we would recommend you guys get. It, it doesn't, doesn't do us wrong. You know, it works every time and you, you get what you pay for. So I brought him in thinking, okay, this is a quick fix. Megan Racing did send us a bunch of uh, rod ends essentially uh, to update guys who had their older parts. So I'm gonna show you guys, cause we just took his out of his car, what was happening with their polyurethane bushing. So check this out. I wasn't gonna bring this up in a video before because Megan Racing was doing the right thing and updating the product, so I didn't feel like I needed to uh, bring this to people's attention, but I think it's in everybody's best interest that they notify Megan Racing about this issue. So if you have clunking all of a sudden happening from the back of your car, it's probably because this bushing has started to stretch out and this dowel is no longer staying captive. I mean, it just clunks around inside of here. So you can see this, this is really soft. It, it's just terrible. I can literally just take this out. Look at this. This is why I say you get what you pay for, you guys. So this is how their bushing is pressed into here. That's it. And that, this is what you're dealing with. $168 part. And this is what you get, all right? So, you know, they updated this design and I thought that, okay, they, I'm not even gonna mess with this. They updated it, they gave you, I believe this is a bearing, but now I'm questioning that, but it's sealed. I don't know what's inside of here. I, I literally have to pop one out. So we took this, we swapped it out. We took these polyurethane ends off of here and we threaded the new replacement ones onto this arm. Now, I'm gonna point something out, factory arm. Okay, the outer diameter, the outer measurement of this is 48 millimeters. Let me see if I can show you guys this way. It's 48 millimeters approximately. Okay, now this is also 48 millimeters. All is good. Okay, well, when we went to install this one and we started to torque this down to factory spec, we could not, it, it just kept staying at around 70-ish, 73, 74 foot pounds. But the bolt was still turning. The nut was still turning actually. So we're like, what's happening? There must be something happening here in this material. It must be collapsing. So we ended up pulling the arm back out to get a physical measurement and look, it collapsed almost two millimeters. It's 46 millimeters now. So when we removed, tried to remove this, the bolt did not want to come out. So look, initially, oh look, it's so easy, okay? The ID is correct for an M14 bolt, right? Look at this one. It collapsed inside. Look at this bolt. It won't go through. So this was not very fun to extract. So I just wanted to point this out to you guys. I will not be offering this product at this time. I don't know if Megan's going to do a revision again. I hope that they see this video. I'm using this video to inform them and if any other companies are using this type of an end, whatever they're doing in here, uh, I don't, I don't know what to tell you guys. I, I can actually feel where the material, it's not even collapsing on the inside. It's literally right here at the edge. 
It's insane. It's right here at the edge. It's right here. There's a, there's a bump right there. See, this side will go in. It's literally collapsing right here. Right here. The material is so weak. So that's it, guys. Ixnay on the Megan Racing. I had to put that in this video. I do not want you guys to buy this product from us. We will not be listing it on our website. The white line arms, which are around 225 bucks, we do have on the website. They haven't given us any issues if you want something that's inexpensive. Otherwise, I will strongly recommend that you go to one of the billet arms, the intuitive arm, the mountain pass arm. We love those because of the clamp or the pinch bolt mechanism. It's something we like. There's also the unplugged arm as well, but it does use the jam nuts, so you can decide for yourself what's easiest for you guys to use. But those ones definitely have higher quality components than what you will find in this Megan racing arm. All right, back to the program. Now we get into the billet side, okay? So we'll start off with the unplugged one. So the unplugged one uh, is aluminum. It's, it's quite light, at least this end is. Um, this one, I'm not sure what this end is. It, it might be aluminum as well. It's definitely heavier on this side due to this bearing. So it is a sealed spherical bearing. You can see that. Take a look. All right. Uh, they do use a jam nut on both sides, very similar to these ones here. So you will need to be uh, careful when you tighten these things up because you don't want this stuff to twist on you. You want everything to stay centered. Now, the thing that you need to know about this arm is the size of this turnbuckle and these jam nuts. They are pretty massive. So as you can see, we had to actually cut some wrenches down because they're so big. So we've got an inch and a quarter and an inch and an eighth wrench, right? So inch and a quarter on the turnbuckle, inch and an eighth on the jam nut. That's what you're dealing with. Now, if any of you know your tools, you know how long this size of a wrench is. It is probably like that long at least. So you may have to cut this down or you may have to use a crow's foot or something like that so that you can get in there because you've got a lot of things in the way in order to adjust these arms. So something to be aware of, you know, Steven opted to chop his down so that he can adjust these. So that's one thing about that. Uh, on the intuitive arm, I actually really like this design. Uh, this design, they use an actual clamp. So the only one arm that I don't have on site here today is SPL. SPL uses a similar design to this where they use a clamp. In order to loosen the clamp, you'll need a T30. All right, so it's a Torx T30. That will loosen the actual Torx bolt that's in here. All right, so you loosen that and this clamp can swivel. Once that is loose, you can use a 30 millimeter wrench. We just use this crow's foot because we had it. So this is a 30 mil. This 30 mil will go on the turnbuckle here. All right, as such, and you can turn this to get your adjustment. And then once you're done, you're going to go ahead and take this, this T30, and you go in and you're going to tighten these back up, get the clamps on there, get it nice and tight. Now, the final one, and this is probably the one that we like to work with the most in terms of alignment. This is the mountain pass arm. Not only is it a beautiful blue color, but in our opinion, it is also the easiest one to use and adjust. So they also use a pinch. They also use a clamping mechanism. They don't actually have a clamp, but they, they basically have a pinch over here. So this bolt is a 10 millimeter head. So you can loosen this. Okay, loosen this one. So you loosen these two. Then you have a 17 millimeter wrench in here to adjust this. And here's the beauty of it. Look how small this wrench is. So you can get a, a standard 17 millimeter wrench will be maybe this long, you know? So you don't need any real special tools, any really large tools. Very easy to work with. Three year warranty on this product. You get it in there, you adjust this thing, 
let's just assume this side is fixed, both sides are fixed, you can adjust this and these will stay in their centered position. And then you go in and you just tighten this thing up and you're done. Super easy, we love this product. These ones over here are around close to $400. And these ones are, the white line's 225. The Megan's probably 170 bucks or something like that. Uh, the, Ma the Mountain Pass arm does have a three-year warranty on it. The Intuitive arm has a six-year warranty on it. And the Unplugged arm, you can check their website. I know these guys, if you ever have any issues, you just hit them up and, and they're pretty good about taking care of it. I don't know what the exact warranty policy is on their product. So, you know, another thing I wanted to add about the Mountain Pass arm is that it does come with a bracket. I don't have it here on me, but there is a bracket that will bolt on uh, underneath this, this 10 millimeter head bolt right here. And that bracket is for the European market or some of the foreign markets that have an actual um, headlight uh, leveling sensor on it. So that sensor can attach to this arm. So there is a provision for that with Mountain Pass. As you can see on these ones, they also have the provision here. So this can be removed. Uh, it does kind of move around. It, it, you know, it can swivel around so you can figure out where, what position you want it to be in. The Mountain Pass arm goes in the actual OEM position essentially. So you've got that benefit. I don't see those provisions on the uh, Intuitive or the unplugged arm. But again, you know, the US market is kind of where we're based at. It's not a it's not a concern for us over here. Uh, if you do have air suspension and you have height sensors, then having that provision in place is nice because you can actually attach your height sensors to those brackets. So that's another bonus for, for some of these arms. And there you go, guys. I kind of went over some of the benefits of them, some of the materials they use, the tools that you'll need. That's really you know the helpful bit of information out, out of all of this is that you'll know before you get started what tools you're going to need. Um, I know that we've had to go in and align some of these arms and realize we needed a really large wrench and that wrench was so big that we couldn't get in there to do adjustments. So we had to, we had to cut them down. Um, well guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. If you haven't checked out our Patreon account, please check that out at patreon.com forward slash and we'll see you on the next one.